What's up guys, it's Matt Collins Jones here, also known as the D365Geek, and today I'm talking about Microsoft Flow, I'm talking about, oh, oh no, I'm not talking about Microsoft Flow anymore. Yeah, that's right. So, uh, this week uh, is MS Ignite in Orlando, and Microsoft announced a change to uh, Microsoft Flow. It is now called Power automate this kind of fits in a bit more nicely in the power platform trifecta of power apps power bi and power automate previously microsoft flow but don't fret uh, flows are still here you still create flows power automate is simply the name of the um, the brand, so the name of the overarching software umbrella for it. Um, what you are creating in Power Automate are still called flows, because that works a bit better. Now, in celebration of this, and because I've just done a video on types of Microsoft Flow, um, we are going to talk about a brand new type of flow called a UI flow, just announced this week at MS Ignite. What is a UI flow? A UI flow allows you to record uh, mouse and keyboard inputs um, from a desktop application or from a web application and then allows you to go on through those steps. So previously you'd have a Microsoft flow that would um, you know, trigger something, do some action, maybe connect to an API and then do some other actions. This is designed for people where you don't have access to an API, where you maybe can't talk to it with Microsoft flow. Maybe it's a desktop application that you need to do something manually like move a file to a server drive or something like that. That is where UI flows come in. So UI flows automate that process, whether it is on the web or whether it is on a desktop. Now let's take a look at how this works and I'll go through a couple of examples. So I'm in my Power Automate section, uh, my Power Automate uh, environment, and you can see here I've got um, this UI flows preview tab on the right. Now if I click on my flows and go to the drop down where I'd usually create a flow from, it's not in here yet, it's still in preview, so to access it you need to go to UI flows preview, and then you can click on new or create a UI flow here. Once you click that, you get these two options. You can uh, make something for a desktop app or you can make a, a UI flow for a web app. I'm gonna show you web app in this instance. Uh, do note, you do require the latest versions of Microsoft Edge, Chromium or Google Chrome to do this. Uh, once you um, do do this, you're prompted for a flow name. So we'll call this D365 Capture and a base URL. So this is the URL that the flow will um, will launch as well. So I've got this in my keyboard buffer, hopefully. There we go. Um, now, you can probably notice there's this little carousel. And this is actually saying that this is going to record it with Selenium IDE in your browser, which means the first time you try to launch this recorder, it will prompt you to download two extensions for Microsoft, for your browser. The Power Automate, previously Microsoft Flow extension, and the Selenium IDE extension. And that is how it allows you to capture those inputs. So when you hit launch, it'll say you've not got this installed uh, and then we'll prompt you to download. I do have this installed, so we'll just click launch recorder. And this launches the Selenium IDE plugin. Um, so what it's going to do is when I hit record, it's going to log all the steps that I am, um, that I am inputting on this device. Um, so let's click record and talk through it. Start recording and instantly Selenium launches my web browser at the URL that I put in that base URL. So we're going to go over to accounts, we're going to click new account, we're going to give the account a name like test1, uh, we'll also give it a phone number of 1234567789 and we're going to hit save and close. And then I'm going to go back to Selenium and I'm going to stop the recording. Now, as you can kind of see, 
uh, as I've done all these things, you can see all these commands and that it's logged in this window. So you've got all these different things of open the web page, set the window size. Um, down here we can see I've typed in some text here uh, and typed in a number here and it's logged all these things all the way along. So what this means is it's captured all that data that you can then play back. Um, so for instance, um, it's captured, uh, so if I if I played this now, it would go through and it would it would redo all that all those steps. Now, one thing that I want to do is I actually want to change this bit. So um, as I've typed in the account name, I've given it a, a value of test one. Um, for the next test, I want to call it test two, and that way uh, I know that uh, it's a different record, and we can do that. So once I'm happy with this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select run all tests. And we're going to sit back and watch. Now, um, one thing I'm going to do is going to slow the execution speed down a bit, um, just to find that sometimes with loading pages, it doesn't always work very well. Plus, it might work a bit better on video as well. Want to do this? So we will hit run all tests. Now, I'm not going to touch the mouse at all. So everything that you see here is the UI flow doing it. So we're navigated to accounts. We've clicked new. We've typed in test two. We're going to give it a telephone number. We're going to hit save. Uh, oh, it's actually popped up to say that it's found the same telephone number. That's a problem. Uh, but that's that's a good test. So it's, it's checking that duplicate detection. Um, so I'll take over now and I'll cancel this and I'll go back to Selenium and stop the test. But uh, that's a really good thing. So we could now um, update this. So we could add um, one on the end of this. And then we could uh, rerun the test. So is that window still open? Uh, it is. So I'm going to close this down. Uh, this is start to write. So I'm just going to hit run again. And we'll see it do it again. So again, it launches our, launches our Dynamics instance. Now it's to account, clicks on new, types in test two, types in hopefully new phone number, new phone number. Hit save and close, and there we go. So that's the test done. So it's run through all those steps that we captured and allows us to put this in. Um, I'm just going to close this window down and make sure this is stopped. Um, and that's it. So once you've captured all these pieces of uh, all, all this, all these steps, you can then save it. So on top right, there is a save project. It takes you back to this screen, and now we can see that we've got this uh, Selenium capture, uh, this web Selenium capture here. Um, and you can go in, you can edit it, you can go back into here, um, you can move things around. So if I wanted to actually uh, move the test to under te like the the name of the account under here, I can just click and drag and drop and move and stuff like that, and then resave it. So I can still edit these things after I've captured them the first time. Let's move. Um, so now I could potentially go off and find and create a Microsoft flow that when something happens, I go and do those steps. Uh, and I could potentially put that in and, and have that update somewhere. But I'm not going to show you that right now. I'm going to show you the other type of UI flow. So we'll click new again. And we'll, this time we'll choose desktop app and we'll click on next. We'll give this a flow name of calculate. Click on next, and here we go. So this one is slightly different because this one is is going to capture some inputs that is going to ask you up front. So we can add a new input, and I will add a label of uh, number, number one, and we'll add in a number of two, uh, and add a description. This is number two, um, and then we'll add in uh, number two, and we'll give that a value of one and we'll call that number one um, because it's nice and confusing. So we'll click on next and we'll get through to this stage. So now we have record and edit steps. So you can see this is very um, sort of like flow familiar. We start the UI flow and then we record the steps. So you get this window here, which is an action that you can use and we can click launch recorder. Launching the recorder, you get this uh, this little menu up the top, um, this little sort of toolbar, um, and you can choose uh, record. 
Once you select record, it's now logging your steps on desktop. So if I go to my search bar, type in calculator, open up the calculator, then I could click into this bar at the top and I could add an input of number one. Uh, if I click into it, it'll give me the number two in there. It's nice and easy. I'm going to click on plus, then I'm going to go back and add another input. Uh, the number two input, which is the number one, and then I'm going to click equals, and uh, that's number three. Now I can capture this output, so this bit here I can capture uh, and say I want to um, I want to know what this this input is if he wants to work with me today. So I can capture this as being the result, and it kind of already knows that it's displaying number three, um, and I can do a description as well, and I can hit save. Once I'm happy with it, I can click done. Um, now that has in the background captured all those steps. So this, these are all the steps in the scope. So it launches the calculator. We've got a left click one, left click two. If I open these as well, it gives you a screenshot. So it captures those screenshot uh, pieces of data as you're clicking around uh, and finds them for you. Um, and then we can see uh, post element two. So when we're putting in the number two into there, uh, when and then when we're getting the element at the end, uh, we're getting that out. So we, if we like that, we can click on next, and then we got the result, which is the output. So that's fine. So we'll click on next. So this is where we can actually change these numbers around. So we can add different variables into this test. So I could put in five for number one and maybe nineteen for number two. If I click test now, it's going to automatically run that test. I'm not going to click anything. So let's take a look. So we've clicked test now. Um, it does warn you at the top, it says do not interact with the device until the test is complete. Um, now it's launched the calculator automatically. Uh, it's hopefully it's put in that first number, number five. That's the variable one that we put in uh, recently. It's clicked on plus. Uh, Hopefully it's going to put in the second number in a moment. Um, it does take a little bit of time to try to run through these steps and interpret what it's doing and where it is. So do be a bit patient with it. Uh, it's doing the answer to 24, which is 5 plus 19, which is all good. Uh, and then, yeah, we can see in the background uh, it should be now complete. We'll just wait and see if it updates. Right, I think it has finished. Ah, yeah, it has finished. It just didn't update the UI in the background to know that it finished. So it took 58 seconds to do that. But it's as easy as that. So I can save and exit now, and then I will have another uh, you, uh, another UI flow ready to go and ready to trigger from another flow. So this gives you so many possibilities, especially people that are working with legacy systems. It gives them the ability to do some form of automation, capture some of those steps, and allows you to then um, you know automate it. You know those systems that previously you couldn't automate you can now potentially automate. There are a couple of caveats. You do need to be logged in and things like that. To actually automate it, you need to install the uh, data gateway so you can connect sort of like the on-premise to uh, to Flow and stuff like that. That's, that's true even if it's a web API as well. At least that's what I found. Um, so I'll probably show that in another video, uh, how to install the data gateway and, and sort of like show those connection bits. But for now, I think this is pretty cool. Um, it is using Selenium and it is using a couple of other bits for um, some of it. Um, and it is a bit more of a, a, a different interface than we used to, especially that um, web capture. But the desktop capture is very familiar to Microsoft Flow, uh, or sorry, Power Automate. Um, and all these flows. So what do you guys think? Are you going to be uh, trying this out? It's currently in preview. There will be some bugs, there will be some issues. Let Microsoft know. They'll fix them, they'll look into them, they'll make this the best product they can, just they always do. Um, but yeah, have a play around with it. Let me know what you think. Drop comments down below if you've had a play with it. I'd like to know. Hit me up on Twitter. Again, I'd like to know on that D365 Geek. Uh, and yeah, I hope to see you next time.